Oh my god! Ha 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 ha
Who do you know that always makes you smile? <laughs> is that a trick question? Or no. are we supposed to say each other? <laughs> like, no. Besides each other. Yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's a trick question. Besides each other. She makes me giggle all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... The, the, the person <laughs> that I talk about... The person that I talk about a lot and you know is my ex-boyfriend but also one of my very good friends and he is the rare specimen and I prefer the rare specimen over ex-boyfriend yeah I don't, I don't like that word because people, people just he's so much more than that yeah people yeah. automatically assume when it's like an ex dun 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 what so rare specimen because people who you can just be yourself with and we don't even talk every day but yeah. all I have to do is just like explain some context and then he'll just know exactly how I'm yeah. feeling and what to say and I'm just like okay <laughs> I feel better. Same same effect that this rare specimen gives me, so yeah. Alright, my answer is my mother. As much as she makes me angry half the time, the other <laughs> half of the time we're just giggling. And I think you witnessed that yesterday. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. My dad says we bicker like little girls, but then we also <laughs> giggle like little girls. So it just it depends what kind of a mood my mom's in. Yeah. Because whatever mood she's in, I'm in. Yeah. But it, when she's happy, which is more often than not recently. When I like saw that, I was like, this is weird, but this is like should be more normal. Yeah. But this is weird in a good way. Yeah. I love you, mom. <laughs> she watches most of my videos. I love you, mom. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you think has been the most formative years of your life? Formidable is like crucial and developmental. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um. Well, formidable is like scary. Formative is like what you just defined. Formative. Yeah. They're formidable, different. scary. Yeah. Formidable is like daunting. Formative. Most daunting years of my life. No, formative, right? Formative. Yeah, formative is Can't like English. <laughs> formative is like when the most when you're moldable, most moldable. Oh, like mo most like impressionable. Yeah, exactly, impressionable. Okay. Okay, so growing up in the suburbs of Jersey mm -hmm. and then going to New York, oh my gosh, that's probably, those four years of college were my most formative years. When you're like, it's like being thrown in the freaking deep end and you know, in real life, I can't swim, so. <laughs> Yeah, living in New York for college and just being exposed to everything and anything yeah. and we're, like whether you want to even see it or not, yeah. you, you have to, like just... It's there. It's in your face. It's like, hello! Yeah. I don't want to see you, but hello! Yeah. So, it's funny how like we just missed each other yeah. in New York, but I'm glad that we did because yeah. like things happen when they should. But yeah, the years in New York. I think anyone who goes to New York is gonna... Have like, that. Yeah. Yeah. In for a nice reality check. Yeah. yeah. In the best way possible. All right, I think I totally agree with you. I think my my years in my year in New York was actually a very awesome in terms of development and growth. But if I have to pinpoint a time period of my life where it was the most formative, yeah, um, we're about to get real deep. So <laughs> I think in retrospect, it was probably the months that I was severely like depressed and unhappy and had really bad anxiety i can't i couldn't sleep i couldn't do anything i had like an eating disorder i talk about everything in this video of how i found my life purpose that's kind of being so not okay was m what made me crave and like really want to find mm -hmm. the answers to what does it mean to be okay and how like how can i define that for myself and how can i get there myself so I think, yeah. Literally the image that comes to mind when you're describing that is Batman when yeah. he's in that, what's that, I don't even know what that place is called, but that bottomless pit and yeah. he's living in that prison and he knows that the way out is up, yeah. but very few actually make the jump, let yeah. alone actually get Bane. out. Yeah, that part, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Right? They live like, yeah. underground and then there's the rocks and they always have ropes mm -hmm. hanging onto them just in case they fall. And it was only when he jumped, took the leap of faith without having the rope where he actually made it. Right. And like went out. Right, but it's like only in that darkness. Oh my God, I have the chills right now. <laughs> <laughs> That like you yearn for the light and the possibility of a better life and knowing that something like that exists, yeah. you you do whatever it takes to get out of it. And I feel like that was what was similar in like... 
I think it's what a lot of people yeah. who have this, who have found a way out. It's it's a pretty like yeah common formula. Because you, you realize you're like a lot stronger than you think, a lot smarter than you think, a lot braver than you think. You realize the voices in your head are just voices in your head yeah. that you put there yourself. And yeah. if you learn to readjust to praises or like, hey, I'm actually not that bad. Hey, I'm actually a really cool person and I can do it. And I'm like, I believe like, yeah, in myself. Yeah. 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 So that was, yeah. Shit got real. <laughs> <laughs> what roles do love and affection play in your life? No, oh, they play everywhere. <laughs> Love and how, okay, how, what, what, in what context does it mean? Like, how do you show it? How do you receive it? Like, what's your love language? Love languages. Is it important to you, yeah. or do you like shut yourself off from any yeah. feelings? Obviously not, because we're so <laughs> full with feelings. So, like, I think that's what yeah. the question means. Okay, so. I love to love. I'm just like a very <laughs> loving feelings person. Um, Same. I. I think I'm pretty affectionate like when I meet people like sometimes I'm like very like friendly and I just like you know it's like I think you show your affection with how warm you are yeah you know oh you tell me and I tell you yeah <laughs> <laughs> tell me good things about myself <laughs> no but I mean yeah. it, affectionate doesn't necessarily mean like touchy feely yeah it's just like how you make someone feel yeah. so yeah I don't know if that changes the question or anything no I th yeah I think it's I think because I I know what it's like to not be okay whenever I meet mm. people regardless of who they are where they're coming from what they look like I just want to exude love and yeah. positive energy and yeah. just like be a little sunshine because I don't know what you're going through I don't know what anyone's going through but if I alone like my smile or you know me just saying hi and asking how was your day and actually genuinely caring about someone if that alone can make other people feel awesome yeah and that's like such a small thing to do it's like why not do it because I remember when I was like not okay if anyone did like the slightest thing that I knew they purposely and proactively yeah. took the time out of their day to just say hi to me or like ask me how I am even if they're a complete stranger it makes my day so it's the least that I can do yeah love language wise I receive or I need quality time that's yeah. like my top thing it's like I, I need time with yeah. people giving wise I think it's like acts of service mm -hmm. I like like doing things for people to like show that you care going out of my way to do things yeah, yeah. and it, that, it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic so yeah, yeah. like romantic or not yeah yeah um I didn't like hugging people until like meeting a freshman year I remember Going to fashion school, the way that you greet people in like a fashiony way, it's like to give the double kiss. And I, when that, I remember when that first happened, I was like, "What is happening?" Get your <laughs> lips off my cheeks. <laughs> and like just being really close to someone yeah. without even knowing them was a really weird concept. And then over the years, I still am a little guarded when it comes to like, you know, embracing someone, and it means that much more to me. And I feel like. Love is a word and something that like people just throw around. Yeah. But when I say I love something or someone, it is like, I mean it, you, you know? I mean it. It's not like a, I love you, bye. <laughs> you know, it's not like a, you know, a thing that you just throw out yeah. into the wind. But, you know, like you, I think you described it really well. Like, I think because I know what it's like to be on the other side and like to have like that emptiness and like that loneliness. If there's any way that I can like sprinkle sunshine or bring light to someone's life, as serious as I am, I like try to do that because I think we're like hardwired for connection and just an acknowledgement of like, oh, hello, you exist. Of like your presence. Yeah, I think that's so that's important. Like, wow, yeah. In New York, you're like, Closed yeah. off and like resting bitch face and like yeah. furrowed eyebrows and like you, it's not a culture where you're supposed to be friendly and loving and I think moving out to LA and just being comfortable with people like you has made me like open up a little more. So baby step. Yeah, I think but good things. Feeling the layers of the onion. Mhm. Mm All right. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, it has to be green now. Oh, yeah. Right? So, All right. This is like the hardest level question, the most difficult. Just green. What's the toughest challenge you're facing right now? Right now? Right now. Um. Hmm. 
just wipe my face. <laughs> <laughs> my face itches. <laughs> I think two things. First one's not a bad problem to have. It's like once I meet people like you, you just want to meet more people like you. Yeah. So it's like, how do I find more people like Guys, you? Guys, I'm not that cool. Really no, but like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you were cool, okay? I said that we get along and I just want more people that I can feel comfortable with yeah. um, and aren't afraid to talk about these things. Yeah. I think that's, that's what I'm looking for. I want people who have thought about the things that we're talking about and aren't afraid to share and talk, mm -hmm. talk about it even more. And where can I find more people? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, this is such a feelings thing and something that yeah. people keep to themselves. Where do I find you other unicorns and aliens? Like where? Rare you know? specimens of the world, yeah. speak up. That's something I think about constantly. Yeah. And then the second one is, I mean, I've been really quiet on my end in terms of like videos and blogging, putting it out there. When people have asked me in private messages and in person, how has it been moving to LA? Like, how are you? I feel like I haven't given them an answer that does it justice. Yeah. So something I'm really, really struggling with is like, I know it needs to be said and I know it needs to be shared, but like, why am I not putting it out there? So getting off over that kind of mental hurdle of just do it and it's okay if not everyone cares, it's okay yeah. if it's not perfect, just do it. That's like my biggest struggle is real. Talk about her YouTube channel yeah. and just creating content in general. Yeah. It's like just, just getting started. Yeah. Just gotta do it. Yeah. Just, like, rip it off like a band-aid. I keep telling her, I was like, you know what you should do? <laughs> just start recording yourself in front of the, the just like talking like this by yourself like what I did when I started and just post it online. Yeah. Get in the habit of sitting in front of the camera, talking to the camera, editing it, watching yourself, being okay with watching yourself, post it online, put it on private, send mm -hmm. it to people who you really trust and care about and who you know will give you good feedback and just start with that. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, I know, I know. But she'll do it soon. Yeah, I, I know. Eventually, it. I know it. <laughs> um, okay, so I feel like my internal struggle that yeah. I've been having with a lot lately. I think the most important or the biggest thing that I'm having a big tough challenge with is I am not self accountable for myself. Like if I were to tell myself, I promise myself I'm gonna wake up at six a.m. tomorrow so I can go to the park and meditate and do all the things that I want to do. So I'll have a very productive day. I'll not wake up the first day, mm -hmm. but then I'll wake up early the second day because I hate myself so much <laughs> the day before for not waking up. But then the day after, I'm yeah. gonna sleep in again. And then because I hate myself again, I'll wake up early the next day. So it's it's very inconsistent of this like self loathing. And I just I want to get to a place where I'm just like I'm up. I'm gonna do my thing because I know this is good for me instead of fighting and dealing with all of this resistance So I think it's just like self accountability when you're faced with these like forks in the road I want to get to a point when I'm my life in my life where I can just constantly choose the right thing for me Yeah, instead of being met with so much resistance and it just takes time Like I know it's like building a habit actually yeah. takes 66 days not 20 or however many two weeks or whatever that people are saying so it's just consistently doing something enough so that I can be okay with it. And then I think more of like a broader outside of me thing, same struggle. I want to meet more people who are like me, but as outgoing and as like extrovert as, as Andrea is, I'm actually, I don't like, I, I don't yeah. like putting myself out there as much as like, I'm okay with talking for the camera. It's like, I'm talking to myself mm -hmm. to be honest, but like talking to other people, it's like, meeting people like which is so <laughs> which is why i'm so glad i sent you an email yeah. and reached out because yeah. like i never want to reach out to yeah them. and it's not because like i'm not cool enough or anything it's yeah because, it's not like, because of anything like that it's, i'm just yeah whereas i'm like always looking for people to like reach out to so it like balances out okay moral okay is it another green one yeah now this is long your house, containing everything you own, catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make one final dash to save one item. What would it be and why? Ooh. That's a hard question. That's I mean, for me, I feel like. Um, it's going to be a really easy question for me. I think if my loved ones, I don't have any pets, but if my loved <laughs> one and, and my pets have already been saved, I think... I'll be very, very content. I would not want yeah. to run back into risk my life at the expense of like my family being out already. Um, <coughs> if you asked me this two years ago, 
even like a year ago, maybe no, two years ago, I would say I would run back into my home to find my brother's life purpose. So when he was I think like 18 or 19, he passed away when he was 19, but he wrote a list of things that he wanted, to, like he wrote his life purpose. And I think before, like, I think I was really attached to a lot of different material things, including my brother's life purpose. And where's my cat? Where's my cat, I have a cat, I had a cat. Yeah, where is it? Oh, okay. yeah, like my cat, you know, like before even maybe, okay, really quick, funny story. When I went, when I moved to New York, I was like, I'm a grown ass woman. I'm not going to take my cat. I don't need my cat. I'm like 23 now. I don't need something like this. But then a month later, my friend, one of my best girlfriends was visiting me. So I was like, can you help me bring my cat? So even then, but oh now God. I think I've gotten to a point where something like this, it's like, I love you, this thing, and I love everything you like embody because I've had you since I was six years old and same thing with like my brother and his life purpose. But I think I've gotten to a point in my life where I've internalized all of that so that whatever this feels, I can feel in here even if I don't have that whatever my brother's life purpose made me feel and however it makes me feel i've also internalized that and kind of like kept it in here as well i think it also took time like i'm at a point in my life where this is like a very buddhist minimalistic thing of just detachment from things yeah. and uh it took me a long time but i think uh i'm just happy that my family safe and that my well technically this is my pet so <laughs> I'm just glad like if a fire were to hit like I'm I think I'll be fine yeah like, clothes whatever like I can that's all like you can get back but yeah people like you can't really get people back so I mean yeah um I don't know I feel like my answer would be my computer but it's also not something like you said can't be replaced yeah I have a little black notebook where I put like you know one-liners and it's like a mini journal and I'm trying to write more and more of it so if there's anything that I probably want to save it's like that mini notebook because I want to I have like the worst memory as you know and like I want to remember things and it's amazing what things you will remember based off of like the time you spent to write one line yeah and it's not on Facebook, it's not on, a, on Twitter, it's like handwritten at the time in this notebook along with the other memories from other months. So I think it's like that written thing. Yeah. But even if that were to go away, like, it's not like... The end of the world. Yeah. But it's like important to you. Right. Yeah. See, I think I love these questions because <laughs> from something like this, you can you can tell what people are attached to and it's yeah. like, yeah, like... Buddhism like attachment is like a bad thing, but it's like it just we're human like sometimes it just shows you what's important to you and what's what you really value mm -hmm. and Sentiments and like yeah, because I feel like bring memory. Yes. <laughs> All right. I think that's that's it. Yeah All the questions. Yeah so far I mean there's more it's gonna be on her channel and then it's gonna talk and about. if you have any questions you want to ask her, <laughs> you can leave a comment down below because we left really good questions Yeah, yeah if there's more questions for the future, we can do many, many more of these. Also, like, the questions we asked are not some made-up questions. Like, they're, yeah. they're from the... They're, like, scientifically backed questions that will help you connect and get to know someone more. And, like, yeah. really, really, like... From, like, credible scientific people. <laughs> yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got something out of this and if you ever feel like you want to get to know your friends better or if you feel like you know I, something that I kind of struggled with when I would hang out with my friends more now than before it's you know I as much as I care about who had fun the last weekend and how drunk some of them got and like funny drunk stories which I can't argue it's like really funny but after you hear 10 20 yeah. back to back I'm just kind of like but guys like I want to know about you and how you're feeling and like <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> you know? how are you yeah how are you as doing? a person so if you are anything like me and you feel like this could inject some life and color back into your relationships this game actually can be it's supposed to be printed out on note cards 
and it's best played between two to four people. Andrea found another game with the oh yeah the tabletop thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Table topics. Table it's topics. like a deck of cards yeah. with questions. Whether it's like for a cocktail party yeah. or like just to get to know each other or because you're bored. And they're like really good questions. Yeah, I'm pretty like we're pretty picky people and pretty hard to impress but when she read those questions out to me i was like oh these are questions that i actually be interested in asking people so if you guys are interested in any of those things they'll be linked down below <laughs> and we hope you guys enjoyed uh pillow talk mm -hmm. with pillow topics pillow talk i don't know <laughs> we're supposed to film on the floor and then we're gonna go outside but then we're like it's sunday and it's cold just be in bed yeah so thanks guys thank you for spending your time with us and we'll see you guys next time bye <laughs>